In this video, sponsored by Audible, I remind you that your loss is somebody else's win. Quick disclaimer up front, uh, if you're at a tournament, if you're a tournament player, if you're a very competitive player, if you're playing in a tournament, uh, none of this relates. None of this has anything to do with tournaments, so don't, you don't have to mention in the comments that, that this doesn't fit in tournament play because I just said it, it doesn't fit in tournament play. Games are fickle as far as the whole winning and losing thing. Sometimes you're doing quite well, sometimes you're doing poorly. I've talked in the past about how at the beginning of the game it can look like you're going to lose and you give up, but then you don't give up and things turn out really well and you win. But ciao, those are good games frequently that um, we remember, you know, when you snatch, uh, you know, defeat from, no, you'd snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, not the other way around. Um, but it, the whole thing about playing for a winning and a losing situation is something that we see in a lot of different things out there in the world. A lot of things out there in the world are about, are about winning and losing. But um, one thing that we need to remember is that we're playing games. When you are at the local shop and you're playing with per a person you've never played before, potentially somebody who's new at the hobby, and you sit down and say, okay, let's get together and play this game. Maybe you met online, maybe you've met at the shop, whatever the deal is, and now you're sitting down to play. And this is a person that maybe you've never known before, you're not necessarily friends, this is a new interaction, and uh, things start to go poorly for you. Like your, your dice blow up and just don't work very well and everything and you, you, you miss move into some places and do some things that don't make a lot of sense. And, and sometimes those types of games can really be a drain. You know, they can be a real bummer and you can get real uh, unhappy about the, the situation. And, and that's to some degree understandable. But the thing that you have to understand and realize is that this may be a loss for you, but this is a win for your opponent and it might be their first win ever. I remember when I first started getting into Warhammer 40,000, for example, I played and played and played. I was playing in a weekly game on Sundays at a friend's place and we were getting together and playing, and I never won. It was just week after week after week of just getting slapped around, which totally makes sense. I've told you guys, I don't know how many times, that when you start painting, you're not gonna be a painting expert. When you start playing, it's generally the same type of thing. You're going to make mistakes that your more uh, advanced you know, opponent will probably be able to capitalize on. You're going to um, not understand the finer points of a particular rule. You're going to not understand the finer points of a particular strategy. You're just not going to think enough steps ahead, whatever the deal is, and you're going to get stomped a lot. So when you finally get to the point where you win a game, but if, you, that, I mean, it's amazing, it's great. When you, I, I still remember winning my first game, but if your opponent is really, really upset and angry and um, it doesn't really make your victory kind of feel as enjoyable as it ought to. People talk about being a good sport. Um, being a sore winner is no fun. People kind of don't enjoy that, but being a sore loser is also problematic and I think that that may happen more often than not in comparison to the sore winner part. Um, if you get really super smug with your winning because you're just crushing somebody, um, that's also obviously not a lot of fun for that person. But the way that these games are generally designed for one person to win, the other has to lose. And that makes sense and I get it. Unless you're playing, I don't know, something where that's not the case, like a really long uh, campaign, then you know the losing the battle doesn't mean you lose the war and that's fine but when i'm talking about you're just meeting up with somebody and playing a one-off matched play game at the local shop or at the local club or at a turn not a tournament but like a convention or something like that you know where it's just like pickup games or who knows whatever when you're playing against somebody that you don't know very well if you are a sore loser you can impact their enjoyment of the game and again, like I said, this might be the first time they've ever won. And your first time that you win in a new game should be really enjoyable. 
And if it's not, that's going to potentially cause you to not be interested in playing the game down the road. And here, obviously, at Tabletop Minions, we're all about getting people into the hobby and not driving them away. When I'm losing games, which frankly is, is a good deal of the time, I like to do a couple different things. Number one, if I'm losing a game and I know there's a very little chance to me, for me to win, I like to come up with new plans, new um, like new win conditions for myself. I'm going to lose the game, but I'm going to take out that tank or I'm going to take out that you know HQ unit maybe, like if I'm really getting fancy. And so being able to still you know pull off that win to some degree is kind of cool and it can help me have a good time with the game. Understand, we're talking about games. We're pushing around tiny little toy soldiers on a board uh, in, in, in conflicts that don't exist. Or, you know, maybe if you're playing historical games, they sort of existed, but not like this, obviously. You, you are playing a game, and, you know, games are there for fun. That's the point. And I believe that if you and your opponent, at the end of the game, if you had fun, you won. That's it. I don't care about who won, who lost, who had the objective, who didn't, that kind of stuff. The point of playing a game like this in a casual environment is to sit down and spend time with somebody and have a good time doing it. So if you get real angry about the fact that you're losing this game that doesn't matter because it's just a normal pickup game, not only are you causing undue stress to yourself, which obviously we don't need in our lives, but you're also causing undue stress to this person across from you by, you know, being, you know, just argumentative or anything along those lines. And again, if this person is new to the hobby, that's the one of the worst things that you can do is make the person feel bad about having a good time and winning. Just because you're not necessarily having a good time doesn't mean you 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 know you, you can't think about the opponent. Now, if they're the ones that are causing you to not have a good time because they're a jerk, they're constantly cheating, or there's all kinds of different possibilities. I'm not saying that you always have to completely uh, think about the other person and be like, I have to make sure that they have a great time. If they're being a jerk to you, then you know you don't have to necessarily try real hard to think about their feelings as much. It's kind of that golden rule thing that you hear about so much, um, but. Think before you start to get real angry about losing a game, especially when you're playing somebody you don't know, or even if you do know them quite well. I've had tense times with people that I've been friends with for a long time that where the game goes in a direction that they don't want it to go. You know, they start to lose. Um, and and I've, I've had, you know, it, it's a bummer. It really can put a strain on the fun time that you should be having. So understand that how you portray what's going on in this game environment, that really has a huge effect. Obviously, it's got an effect on you and your mood and your overall stress in life and all that kind of stuff, but it has a huge impact upon your opponent as well. And again, it, I can't stress this enough. If this is a person who is new to this particular game, or even worse, if they're new to wargaming, and you give them a really terrible experience in their first win, let's say, or maybe it's their third win or their fifth win or whatever. You give them a terrible experience, you should probably never do that to begin with, you know. But if if this is like the first time that they've actually won and they feel bad about it, that's not going to work very well in the long run. So again, if you're playing in a tournament situation, you can pretty much ignore all of this. But if you are playing to have fun, which is what I generally think games should be about, then you should be thinking of the different ways to have fun within the game, no matter how it's going poorly for you or whether it's going you know, good for your opponent or vice versa, whatever. Think about the best ways to have fun. Allow your opponent to take that move back if they're new or whatever, or even if they're not. If they're like, oh, no, that's what I meant to do. It doesn't really matter. You're not playing for points and a tournament and a prize and all that kind of stuff. You have to understand that the game is about having fun. That's, that's the goal. If you have fun... You won. And if the only way that you can have fun is to win the game, then maybe you want to take a look and see maybe this game isn't necessarily for you. If you can only have fun by winning and you cannot have fun in a game if you lose, then I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I think maybe you should look at a different hobby. Do you wish that there was more tabletop minions for you to listen to while you're sitting and hobbying in your hobby area? Do you wish there were maybe more podcasts that you could listen to? Well, I can't control that, but if you tried Audible, 
audiobooks are something that I listen to all the time when I've run out of podcasts, which happens pretty frequently because I only listen to a certain number of them and they, you know, kind of have their schedules that they stick to. And same with videos. But Audible audiobooks are always available for you to listen to at any given time. There's always another one that you can pick up. And they have like nearly 200,000 titles to choose from, including a bunch of Black Library stuff now. So if you're interested in Horace Heresy stuff or, you know, normal 40K stuff, there's lots of books like that. But there's also all kinds of other science fiction and fantasy and true crime and all kinds of different things like that. You can listen to it on your iPhone or your Android. You can listen to it on a tablet, on your computer. Um, you can listen to it on nearly anything. And if you go to Audible Trial dot com slash tabletop minions you can sign up for a free 30-day trial of audible and you'll get a free audiobook that is yours to keep even if you don't stick through the entire 30 days trial and start moving into the thing you'll get to keep that audiobook and listen to it after the 30-day free trial and like i said nearly 200,000 different things to listen to not just fan, uh, you know, fiction and stuff like that, or even nonfiction, but like there's also self-help stuff. I've listened to a couple of marketing books and things like that. So there's a lot to choose from, and it's always available. If you sign up and stay with them, you get a credit every month, and then that you can put towards a book. So you can listen to a new book every month, but you can also get discounts on buying audiobooks if you want to go faster than that. Books take a long time to listen to usually a lot quicker than podcasts and certainly quicker than my videos. So take a look at it. Uh, click the link below. Uh, it helps out the channel. Audiotrial.com slash Tabletop Minions. Free 30-day trial of Audible plus a free book you get to keep. 